Hi everyone, and welcome back to CardioBuzz. Today we'll be exploring seven groundbreaking clinical trials published in 2023 that have the potential to impact how we diagnose, treat, and manage acute coronary syndrome patients. Welcome to CardioBuzz, your one-stop shop for all things cardiology. We bring you the latest news and research on heart health. Trial number seven, artificial intelligence and ECG interpretation. One third of patients with non ST elevation acute coronary syndrome have a totally occluded culprit vessel. And these patients are not taken to the cath lab immediately because they don't show explicit ST elevation on the ECG. And this can lead to poor outcomes. Could AI systems identify these patients quickly and efficiently? A group of researchers from the US and Europe developed an AI model called Queen of Hearts using more than 18,000 ECGs from more than 10,000 patients. The aim of the model was to detect an acutely occluded culprit artery that requires emergency revascularization from the ECG. And they found that the AI model was more accurate than the standard ST elevation criteria in identifying an occluded vessel. So what are the implications? Clinicians can use the algorithm through a smartphone application. They take a picture of the ECG and then it provides an interpretation, instantly recognizing a totally occluded artery, saving precious time and improving outcomes. And this is not sci-fi anymore. Number six, single antiplatelet instead of dual antiplatelet. Dual antiplatelet therapy has been the standard of ACS treatment. Omitting aspirin totally resulted in a dramatic increase of stent thrombosis in the stop dab 3 trial. Another study from Korea, the T-PASS study, used dual antiplatelet therapy and omitted aspirin after a median of 16 days. And they compared that to 12 months of dual antiplatelet therapy. And they found no increase in ischemic events, but they found, of course, less bleeding events. This could potentially reduce the risk of bleeding without compromising safety. But the problem with these trials is that they are not powered to detect stent thrombosis. So I would still play it safe and continue 12 months on dual antiplatelet therapy in patients with ACS unless they bleed. Then 16 days of aspirin could be sufficient. Number five, drug-coated balloons and ST elevation MI. If you prefer to avoid stents like me, then you will love this study. They compared sequent please neo drug coated balloons to second generation drug diluting stents in more than 1,000 patients with ST elevation myocardial infarction. And they found no significant differences in major outcomes. Drug coated balloons have the promise to shorten dual antiplatelet therapy duration, preserve vessel integrity, side branches, and reduce re stenosis in diabetic patients. Number four, multi vessel and multi stars. Remember the debate about immediate versus staged multi vessel PCI in STEMI? Yeah, the multi stars trial seems to settle it. Immediate revascularization was superior to staged intervention, suggesting a paradigm shift towards treating all blockages right away. So now, for stable multivessel disease in STEMI, complete revascularization is better than culprit vessel only, and it's better to be done immediately and not staged. Of course, that does not apply to cardiogenic shock, sick patients, or high-complexity lesions. So try to treat all the significant lesions in STEMI immediately, but play it safe and don't overdo it, or it will fire back. Number three, hydration made simple. We used to hydrate patients for a whole night before the procedure to avoid contrast kidney injury. This meant longer hospital stays and higher costs. A new study showed that a simplified hydration method with just one hour before the procedure and four hours after the procedure with larger volumes was equally effective in preventing contrast-induced or contrast-associated nephropathy compared to the longer duration protocols. And this would be a win for both patients and healthcare providers. Patients will not have to stay longer, and of course, the cost will be reduced. Number two, frailty matters. The Spanish trial randomized frail acute coronary syndrome patients above the age of 80 to either a conservative management or an invasive management. And they found that the conservative management was better and may be sufficient for the frail elderly patients. And this highlights the importance of considering individual patient characteristics when making treatment decisions in acute coronary syndromes. Number one, cardiogenic shock. After the failure of the ECLS trial to show any benefit from ECMO in cardiogenic shock with even potential harm, the U.S. National Cardiogenic Shock Initiative offered a beacon of hope with its data on Impella. Early Impella insertion combined with prompt PCI to the culprit vessel, hemodynamic monitoring with PA catheters was associated with a significant increase in survival with 71% of cardiogenic shock patients discharged alive. This suggests a potential new paradigm for cardiogenic shock management with early impella, PCI, and hemodynamic monitoring. And this could be the new standard of care for cardiogenic shock.
That's all for today. Stay tuned for a summary of the latest European Society of Cardiology guidelines on acute coronary syndromes to come in the first weeks of 2024.